Okay. So, um, yeah, I was, I'm going to do a quick demo of um, a uh, proof of concept of using uh, PowerSync with YJS uh, CRDT implementation. So we published this example and the accompanying blog post about a month ago. And um, yeah, one of the strengths of CRDTs is, is that they are really well suited to fine-grained collaborative text editing. Um, I think that's one of, the, one of the really great strengths of CRDTs. And um, we've mentioned, we previously mentioned that um, CRDTs can be implemented on top of PowerSync. So um, you can actually uh, sync CRDT data structures using PowerSync. And um, this is quite an interesting way of using PowerSync. So um, the example that we looked at, or the yeah, the popular example of a CRDT implementation is called YJS. So they've implemented a number of different data structures and they've integrated it with a variety of rich text editors. Um, so YJS seemed like a pretty good candidate um, for us to use to build a PowerSync um, CRDT POC. So yeah, we've been planning on, on uh, putting together this POC and demo app for a while. And um, yeah, we released it uh, earlier in January. Um, so it's essentially uh, shows, it's going to show how you can use PowerSync to store the YJS CRDT data structure in Postgres and then keep it in sync between clients in real time. So um, the repo, it's, uh, you can find it in the parsing JS mono repo under the demos directory. It's called YJS Next.js Superbase Text Collab. Um, we, uh, yeah, uh, and parsing JS is the mono repo that um, is a result of, of us merging the uh, React Native and um, uh, Web SDK repos into one new mono repo. So there's a pretty detailed readme here that um, talks through exactly how to set it up. Um, the way this demo app was implemented, it's a Next.js React application. So it uses Next.js on the front end. It uses Superbase on the back end, uh, just for simplicity. And then of course, um, it uses the Parsync uh, JavaScript web SDK. So I can show you kind of what it looks like. Um, and then I can, I can also kind of talk you through some of the implement, uh, implementation details. Yeah, just how it was architected and implemented. So what I'm doing here is I'm loading up the demo in uh, two different browsers. So I have Chrome here on this side and then I have Firefox on this side. And um, this is a, the TipTap Reach Text Editor that we integrated it with. So you can see that um, I can do, yeah, just sort of rich text editing here. Um, there's a bit of a toolbar here for, for, for formatting. There's also some keyboard shortcuts. This, this is all functionality that comes built in with TipTap which is a rich text editor that um, has an integration with YJS. So um, yeah, between YJS and, and uh, TipTap, there's an existing library that essentially just integrates um, the, the YJS data structures with the TipTap um, rich text editor. So we use TipTap here and um, I can now yeah, make edits here and you'll see that those edits uh, sync between the different users. So um, there you can see it just synced over. Um, and uh, what's, what's really great about CRDTs is that um, you can merge CRDTs in any order. You can merge updates in any order and then um, the, all the different users' um, state will converge to the same state. Um, and uh, so basically if I, if I go and make changes on this side and I also make changes on that side, um, all of those conflicts will automatically be resolved. So um, when they merge, they will converge to the same to, to the same state. So you'll see now that um, if I can just give it a second to sync. So now the edits that I made on that side asynchronously um, got merged correctly, and then the edits from this side got merged correctly on on my Firefox window over here. So um, that's a really neat property um, about CRDTs. Uh, it gives you kind of that behavior that you would expect from, for example, Google Docs. Google Docs, I think, doesn't actually use CRDTs. It uses operational uh, transformations, which is, has some similarities, but it's a kind of a different type of algorithm. So um, being able to build these types of um, more rich collaborative applications is, is obviously quite useful, and you can, you can get quite a bit of leverage uh, doing that with, with PowerSync. Uh, it makes it pretty simple. So... Um, I could briefly talk through just the implementation. So um, a CRDT data structure is basically uh, uh, is represented as binary data. So, um, and it's, it's fairly easy to store binary data in Postgres, of course. We use the byte A uh, column type, uh, which is used for blob data. And then you, you need to decide how to store the data. So typically, 
um, storing the entire CRDT data structure as one big binary blob uh, is typically not very efficient um, to do that in a, in a Postgres database. So the way we did it was we basically have a separate row in the database for every edit to the document. Um, so the actual schema is pretty simple. We have a documents table that just keeps track of the different documents and then a document updates table where we store the update data um, as a byte array, so the binary data, and then um, each document update belongs to a document via this document ID uh, foreign key. So as you can imagine, if there's a ton of keystrokes, you're gonna have a lot of rows in your database, but you can actually merge the update. So you can compress all the um, different update rows into a single row. And you could do that automatically or manually. Um, and YJS makes that, makes that pretty easy. And we've included a function in the demo app, uh, just a very basic implementation that shows how you can merge um, these different document update rows into a single row, just flatten them into a single row. So the next thing is um, syncing that data from Postgres to uh, the parsing client using parsing sync rules. So uh, in parsing, to work with binary data, you need to take the byte A columns and convert them to base64. Um, so this is pretty easy uh, in the sync rules. So you can see the sync rules here. Um, th these sync rules are not meant to be production ready. It's just a demo for now. So for something more production ready, we would want to sync only the documents and their updates that are relevant to a specific user. Um, but that would also be dependent on authenticating the user. And we excluded authentication from this um, just to make this demo really simple for now. Um, we're just using anonymous authentication for this demo. Um, so. Uh, by the way, if you want to know how to do anonymous authentication, if you're not familiar with that, um, in our documentation under Superbase Auth, there's a link here um, showing how you can, um, yeah, just some example code for doing anonymous authentication. So this demo uh, uses that um, for anonymous authentication, um, and the way it's structured right now, uh, it just syncs all the day all the documents data to all the users. But yeah, ideally, you would want to scope this by user to make it more production ready. And that brings us to the client side implementation. So YJS has the concept of providers. So the way they structure YJS is you have connection providers um, that handle communication between clients, and then you have persistence providers that uh, handle data storage. But when PowerSync is used in conjunction with uh, YJS, it combines the connection provider and the persistence provider in one. So um, PowerSync stores all the document data in Postgres on the server side and in SQLite on the client side. So it handles the storage and it also handles um, the communication between clients by virtue of syncing the data automatically between the different users. So that means that um, using parsing actually makes YJS implementation pretty easy. It really simplifies the, the YJS implementation because it just takes care of connection and persistence. So um, on the client side, uh, we instantiate a, a YJS document in memory. So um, if you go and look at the demo app code, uh, you'll see here, on page.tsx, which is just one of the, the pages in our Next.js app here, you can see we instantiate a new blank uh, YDoc, which is the, the YJS document structure. And um, the YDoc is then populated by applying document updates that are queried from the local SQLite database. Uh, and we can use parsing live queries to continuously watch the database for document updates and then apply those to the in-memory uh, YJS document. So this is what the code looks like in simplified form. We query the database for um, updates to the specific document. Uh, we also use a set just to keep track of um, which uh, document updates from the database or from elsewhere we've already applied to the YJS document. Um, and then, yeah, YJS provides this API apply update where you just um, apply the uh, that specific update to the document. So we load all the data, we apply it. Um, YJS uses a uint8 array in JavaScript to represent binary data. So the data coming from the parsing SQLite database is in base64. So we just we have a utility function that converts from base64 to uint8 array. So it's just two different formats of the binary data. Um, so this is just what the code would look like in simplified form. But in our actual application, the way we structured it is we created this uh, parsing YJS provider class, which extends the the observable class from the YJS utility library, and um, in this class, you'll see uh, that uh, watch query that I mentioned is, is just over here. Um, so there it does uh, applying of the updates. And the way this is structured is this query takes care both of the initial loading of the document from the local database, as well as receiving real-time updates from other users. And then the remaining part of the client-side implementation is to watch for new edits to the YJS document made by the user via the TipTap text editor, and then to persist those document updates to the local SQLite database. And then from there, PowerSync 
uh, syncs it to Postgres and to other uh, client users. So the way we do this is we use the um, update v2, we listen for the update v2 event, which is an event that is emitted by YJS. And when we receive that event, um, we uh, save it in the database. Uh, YJS also has this uh, property where you can associate an origin with, with every um, uh, update on the document. And um, we want to exclude uh, updates that, are, that have originated from the SQLite database. So we keep track of the origin. We exclude ones that originate from the SQLite database. Only ones that originate from the text editor, we're going to insert as new rows into the database. And we have to do that uh, inverse conversion from a uint 8 array to base64 to get it in the binary data in the correct format. So as you can see, this code is pretty simple. And then um, in the actual demo application, uh, you'll see uh, here is that, that, that same function that inserts the data into the SQLite database. And then the only remaining part is to write the data to Postgres. So um, of course, Parsync allows you as the developer to define your own backend connector. Um, so you control how the writes are made to Postgres. So we have a Superbase connector um, that takes care of that. You may have seen this in some of our uh, demo apps or example apps. And um, for efficiency reasons, we batch together the insertion of document updates into the database. Uh, because you know every keystroke can essentially be a different row in a database. You can you can have a, a lot of rows that need to be inserted, so batching them together um, works really well for efficiency reasons. So we uh, have in this example app we've created a Postgres function insert document updates um, that can insert a whole batch of updates. So um, that's this function here. It's defined in the database uh, .sql function or sorry file, and um, you'll see in our Superbase uh, connector we. Um, use the Superbase JavaScript API to basically call that function with a batch of document update rows. So yeah, that's uh, basically the, the highlights of the implementation. Um, yeah, so that's the gist of what I wanted to show. Uh, feel free to shout on Discord if you have any questions or um, 